Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel. In this one we're going to be focusing on enabling Elasticsearch repositories for our application. Before we can start to do that, first we want to talk a bit about what our application is. Since you maybe noticed that we named it register in one of the previous videos, I want to clarify a bit about that. So my idea behind this uh, application or behind this tutorial series was to implement something as a search register. So where you can where you have possibilities to search for different entities. So for example, you can search for persons, maybe you can search for some objects, but then you can also link those two together. So like some persons uh, are working in some objects and you want to find them by the object, or you maybe want to find some persons by their contacts or like telephone contacts, email contacts, stuff like that. So this was my general idea. And in order to start with this, we first want to be, or we want to um, have a possibility to insert some data in Elasticsearch. This is where the Elasticsearch repository comes into play because we can use that to actually put something into the Elasticsearch. Before we can actually put stuff into Elasticsearch, so before we can create a repository, we need to link this repository to some document. So there must be a document or this representation of this data in Elasticsearch. We need to have this as a class in our application. And this is what we're going to create now. And then we're going to create a repository for it. So let's just get started. The first thing that we want to do is in our um, root package, we're going to create a new one. So create a new package and name it document. Inside of this document package, we're going to create a new Java class, and we're going to name this class person document. This person document is obviously going to represent a person in Elasticsearch. We're going to start simple. So we're going to just add a few properties just so in order that we have something. So for the person, we're going to add an ID and a name. Now that we have the ID and the name so that we have these properties, we need to create getters and setters for them. Great. Now, with all of this done, we also need to define to which index this document belongs. And the way you would do that is on the top of the document, you can annotate it with at document annotation. And inside of this documentation, there is a property that allow you to uh, set an index name. So you can say something like uh, index name is and then you can say person here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a repository that's going to link to this person document. So inside of the document uh, package, we can create a new package here. Uh, let's name it person. And within this package, we're going to drag our person document. So we want to group this. So in case that later on, when we have uh, other documents, we can kind of distinguish between them. Um, okay, great. Now inside of this document, um, we're going to create a new uh, sorry, inside of this package, we're going to create a new class. So it's going to be an interface. And we're going to name this one person repository. And this person repository is going to extend Elasticsearch uh, repository, which takes in two parameters. So if we uh, open this one up, you can see that we need some type and also we need some ID. So in our case, the ID is just going to be a string. And the type is going to be yeah, basically the entity that you want to link to this repository. In our case, that's the person document. So we're going to say here, uh, person document, and then we're going to say string. In case that you want to use something different for an ID, so instead of a string, uh, you can also change it here so that you have something different. Okay, okay, now that we have this, um, so that we have our person repository created, we need to kind of register it, we need to enable it. And the way you enable the repositories, you go to your configuration class. So we have our register configuration. And here, just below the configuration annotation, we can say at enable Elasticsearch repositories. And what this gives us, so if you open it up, you can provide some values. So like you can give it uh, base packages, so where it's going to be um, looking for our repositories. So um, so you can see it here, or you can give it a single uh, class or something like this, you can give it classes, you can uh, do it with some include filters. So maybe you could put some annotation or something like this here. Or you can say that you have some kind of uh, um, post fix. So for example, for us, that would be uh, a repository. 
and there, there are different ways how you can do this. So the, the way that we are going to do it now is we're just going to say simply here, uh, wait, let me check it again. Uh, we're going to say base packages, so we can go back, uh, base packages, and then we're just going to have to point to the package that we want to use. So if you go up to the person repository, you can see this is uh, our, uh, yeah, this is our package. So I can go back and I can put this. So this is where our person repository is. I'm not sure. So in the future, when we add more repositories, if we can just simply point to this, um, we can give it a try. So we'll try with this one. If it doesn't work, then we're going to revert to the other one because the other one should definitely work. Okay, great. Now that we have handled that, now we need a way to actually um, yeah, inject our repository somewhere and kind of, you know, um, use it to put stuff into Elasticsearch. So for this one, we're going to create a REST controller, which is going to have access to some service. And this service is going to have the repository and then it's going to be putting it in. So let's create a new package here. So this is where we want to put all of our um, components that are not really related to um, how to call it, so not, not related to Elasticsearch itself, but it's like this Spring Web thing that we're going to have. Um, this can be named anything. So I'm not really sure how to, to actually name it. So it's not really a document. It's, um, hmm, what would this be? Okay, I have a, an idea. We can split it into kind of layers. So we're going to create a REST layer. So this is where we're going to put our controllers. Then we're going to create a new package here. We're going to name it service. It's going to be our service layer. And within this one, we're then going to have a split same as what we have for the document. So we're going to have like person stuff and so on. Um, so let's go for the service first. Actually, no, I'm lying. So within the rest, let's create a DTO. Uh, since we don't really want to expose our document to the outside to our public API, we want to have some kind of transfer object. So the data transfer object the DTO, which is going to represent the data that we want to expose to the public to our clients to whomever. So we're going to name this one person DTO. And similar as what we have in the document, so we can actually copy this. So if you open up person document, you can just literally copy the entire thing here that we have. Later on, we're going to make this a bit nicer. We're going to extract some of these shared properties to maybe some kind of abstract class or something like this. But for now, let's just keep it as it is um, and have it like that. So now that we have our person DTO, we're going to create a new service. So let's create a new service here. Let's name it person service. And we want to annotate this with at uh, service because this is going to be managed by Spring. And what else we want to do here is inject our person repository. Okay, now we also create a constructor entry. So for our repository and uh, we can make it final. Great. So if we go here and we say now um, something like public, uh, maybe void save something like this. And what this gonna is gonna take in is the person uh, DTO that we created. So this is the DTO. And now what we need is to uh, save this with the repository. So we go with the repository, we have the save method. And this save method is going to take in the document. So we need a person document, but we have a person DTO, which means for us, um, we want to convert this. So let's in within the service, let's create a new Java class, let's name it um, person DTO, DTO converter. And what is this going to do is it's going to convert from DTO to the document and then maybe from the document back to the DTO if we need it. So let's create a public uh, person document um, convert method, maybe convert to convert to document is going to take in the person DTO here. So this is going to be our DTO. And since we have really simple stuff, so here, so um, we just create a new instance of the document. Um, which is, yeah, it's, it's simple to, to convert this because we just have the ID and the name. So it's nothing super complicated. But since later on, um, we're gonna add more, um, more entries here. So more properties, we're gonna uh, extract this to some kind of um, 
yeah, shared class and so on. And let's quickly add uh, just some check. So if the DTO is null, we just simply want to return null here because we don't want to run into some uh, exceptions or anything like this. And also let's annotate this with add component because this is going to be managed by Spring. And what we can do now is same what we did with the repository. We can go private final person converter and then uh, inject it here. So if you press Alt Enter on this one, you can immediately get a, a yeah a prompt to add it to the to the constructor here. And let's make uh, these ones final and also this one. And let's maybe put this one into a new line. Okay, great. Now we have our DTO here, so we can say converter convert to document, and then we pass in the DTO, and then we get a document. So in this case, it's a person document, we can say here final. And now we just add another null check. So if the document is null, we just simply uh, want to return here, we don't want to do anything. And in case it's not null, we are saving it. And yep, that's it. Great. So uh, let's maybe just quickly group this. So within the service package, let's create a, um, a person package where we're going to put our converter and the service itself, maybe you want to um, within the hmm, yeah, within the service person, maybe you want to create a new package converter and then just put a converter inside of this. I don't know, you can decide how you want to group this. It's uh, not a big application. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, so then within the, uh, the rest, let's create a new package, let's call it uh, DTO where we're going to put our person DTO. So let's move it there. And then again, in the rest, uh, let's create a controller package. And within the controller, we're going to create our rest controller. So let's name this one. Uh, yeah, person controller. This person controller is going to be annotated with a rest controller, and it's going to have a request mapping something like uh, uh, slash API slash person. And we're gonna have for now just one method. So at post mapping, oops, sorry, post mapping, uh, public void, because I don't think we really want to uh, return anything here. Um, save and we're going to take in a request body. So this is going to be the body of our request, which is just the person DTO. Um, okay. And then here, we now want to call the service. So we need to inject the person service here. So we can say private um, final person service. And we press Alt Enter. So to actually inject this one. And then we can call a service dot save and pass in the, the DTO. And that would be everything. So here you can see the post mapping doesn't have any um, yeah, endpoint stuff here. So we don't really need it because uh, we're just going to use this one. So this is going to be with the post mapping. Uh, it's going to be a save method. Okay, good. I think that would be it. We can actually now give it a try and see if this works. So you uh, want to start your application. You also want to make sure that uh, Elasticsearch is running. And I also have Kibana running because we want to verify a few things. Okay, let me quickly start the application. Okay, the application has started. So it's running. Uh, Elasticsearch is running and Kibana is running. So now let's go to Kibana quickly. Then just let me just show you something. So here in Kibana, we can make a request, we can say a get request, and then we can say uh, underscore cat and slash indices. So what this is going to return us is all of the index indices that we have in the application, you can see here, I have already a person index. And I have this one because um, I've created it earlier. So when I was testing stuff out, so we're going to delete that one. So I'm going to say delete. 
uh, person and I'm just gonna run that and this deletes the person index so if I run it again I should have this and this is what you should have um, when you just first start your application so without any changes so the person index is still not created for you it will only get created when you actually try to insert data in into it so Elasticsearch will recognize that ah, this index doesn't exist let me create it for you okay great so now what you want to do is we need some rest client so that we can actually interact with our application so not with Elasticsearch but with the application that we created. I'm just going to use Postman for this, but you can use basically whatever you want. Okay, I'm here in Postman. I'm going to add a new request. So this is going to be a post because this is what we created. And now I need something like uh, HTTP and then you want to go to localhost. And I have this already mapped. So here you can see this uh, 8080 is just localhost 8080. This is where my application is running. And then what I want to say here is API slash uh, person so because this is the endpoint that we created and within the body I want to switch to raw and then I want to just select JSON here so from uh, this drop down I'm selecting JSON and what I'm going to create here is the actual request body so th the way you can know what this is is you just look at the DTO because this is what we're passing in so we have um, ID so this is going to be some kind of string let's just put it to one or something and then we're going to have um, a name here and let's put this one to um, test test person something like this so this is gonna be our name okay great I'm just gonna let's name this one uh, save person something like this this works yeah it doesn't matter okay cool now I can send this one in and you can see I got 200 okay which means that this request was successful now we want to check if this was actually saved into Elasticsearch. The way you would do this, you were gonna use Kibana for that because Kibana can interact with our indices directly. So let's go back to Kibana. Once we are back in Kibana, we're gonna repeat this uh, request here. So let's execute it. And you can see that now we have a person index, but we don't really see what's in it. We can see that it has something, but we don't know what. So the way you're gonna figure out what you have inside of this one is you're gonna make another get request. You're gonna say person. Um, but then you're going to say under, uh, so slash underscore uh, search. So we're going to search in the person index. We're just searching for everything. There are no filters on this one. So we just go execute that one. And you can see um, that we now got some data back. And, and this is what we are kind of interested in, how many hits there are. It's going to tell us, okay, there's total one hit, which is what we expect. And those hits are here. So this is where the data comes in. Uh, you can see here in the hits, it says, okay, it's an index uh, person, which is exactly what we expect. Um, this is some source. So this is the actual class that uh, is linked to the document, which is again, what we expect. And the ID is, uh, yeah, this one. And the name is person. So a test person, exactly what we expected. So it means that everything that we implemented works and we have successfully enabled Elasticsearch repositories, which is exactly what we wanted. Uh, to achieve in this video. So perfect. Thank you for tagging along. I don't want to drag this video uh, anymore. We're going to uh, expand on this in the next one. So thank you for joining and please consider uh, liking it and subscribing for more videos like this. I'll see you in the next one.